Bitter Side of Sweet, Chapter 18, Part 2. Once we're moving, the realization that I don't know where we're going or how to get us there pounces on me and won't let go. I walk confidently ahead, and the other two follow me. Maybe they haven't realized yet that I don't have a plan. We're pretty much out of Dowla now, passing big industrial compounds, and soon I'm going to have to stop and talk to the others. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I spot a familiar truck. Isn't that Omar's truck? I ask without thinking. What? asks Khadija. I take the sugarcane stump out of my mouth and repeat myself. Khadija and Sadu squint in the direction I pointed. A few blocks farther down, a battered truck is pulling through an open double gate. I think it is, Sadu says, letting go of his arm in order to shade his eyes to see. Maybe it's the lack of sleep, or maybe it's the sugar, but I wonder what's inside that gate. I check my curiosity against my usual caution. But the farm is far away, and Omar showed that he was someone we could trust. Curiosity wins. I lean down to Sadu's level and smile. Want to go find out what happens to all those seeds we collected, I ask. Sadu considers for a moment, holding on to his left elbow. Yes, he says. The three of us walk across the street to the compound where Omar's truck disappeared just moments ago. When we get to the gate in the high wall, we peek through. The cinder block edge is warm in the morning sun and rough under my fingers. I stand there, struggling to take in the scale of what I'm seeing. A series of long, low pavilions covered with tin sheeting mounted on poles are stacked to the roof with bulging sacks. Omar has parked next to it, and men and boys are hefting the sacks of his truck and onto a flat metal square. It's a scale, whispers Khadija beside me. They're weighing the seeds. The combination of the familiar earth and paper smell of dried seeds and the sight of boys working is making me reconsider the wisdom of this. I watch our farm's sacks pile onto the giant scale. Seeing those sacks gives me a strange feeling. Once the seeds left the farm, I forgot about them. I had always been too focused on Sadu and on getting through the day. Now, seeing hundreds upon hundreds of sacks crammed into the long pavilions, I wonder who wants them all. Whistling, Omar gets into his cab and drives his now-empty truck out through the gate. He doesn't see us hiding off to the side, but Sadu gives a small wave anyway. Let's go, I say to get everyone's attention again. I hustle us across the street. What do they want so many of them for, murmurs Zadu. I have no idea, I say, but we shouldn't stick around here any longer. I don't want to get caught. Zadu nods solemnly, but Khadija seems distracted, staring at the bustling compound. Khadija, I say, let's go. Huh? She half tur turns to look at me, clearly not having heard a single word I just said. Let's go, I say again. I'd really like to get out of the sight of, the of that gate. All these men work with the bosses from our farm, one way or another. I'm getting a crawling feeling all over my skin. I can't get away fast enough. No, wait, she says. I think I might have figured out. Wait here. And with that, before I can stop her, she's off, running into the compound. For a moment, I'm so stunned I don't do anything, but the time the shock is worn off, she's already across the street and through the gates. Khadija, Sadu whispers after her as loudly as he dares. Stupid, crazy girl, I mutter under my breath. Then to Sadu, I say, come on. There's nothing I can do for her now that she's in. I take Sadu's hand in mine and run into a narrow alley between the walls of two compounds across the way. Wait, he says, pulling against me. We're not leaving her behind, are we? I don't know what we'll do if she gets caught, I think grimly. You wouldn't survive being returned. But aloud, I say, no, we're hiding so that we don't all get into trouble, and we can help her later if we need to. This seems to be good enough for Sadu because he follows me without another word. We crouch between the crumbling walls, quiet as two geckos on a rock. From where we're hiding, I watch Khadija walk to the nearest man stacking sacks. He pauses his work to talk to her. My heart is in my throat as I watch the two of them, 
waiting for the man to grab her. But after a few minutes, she waves to him and skips out of the compound. For a minute, our view is blocked by the arrival of one of the biggest trucks I've ever seen. But then there she is, standing just outside the gate. Sadu pops his head out from where we've been hiding. Khadija, he calls. And when her eyes find us, the lost look leaves her face. She hurries across the street. What are you doing over here? She asks accusingly. We were hiding so that we could help you later if you got into trouble, Sadu says. She shrugs. Well, she asks, aren't you going to ask why I went to all that trouble? I glare at her. No information could possibly be worth the danger she put herself into. All her promises are worth nothing to me if she gets caught and strands us in the middle of the Ivory Coast. See, she goes on, I had this feeling, and so I went up to that man and pretended I was a Dowla girl who was sweet on one of the drivers. I thought he might be willing to tell me where the trucks go. She can hardly keep the excitement from making her voice squeak as she goes on. See, I had this hunch. I thought to myself, this is just a way station. I bet they're taking the seeds from here and shipping them off for further processing. You know what I mean? I don't have any idea what she's talking about. Khadija rushes on. So anyways, it turns out I was right. Guess where they're taking them. She doesn't wait for us to guess, even though I see Sadu open his mouth to do so. San Pedro. She bounces on her toes, making her tattered blue dress swish around her knobby knees. She grins at the two of us, as if this news should make our day. So, I finally ask, San Pedro is the last place I saw Mama. Maybe she's still there. And if we can get into one of those big trucks, they'll take us all the way to the coast. Even if Mama's not still in San Pedro, we'll know for sure, and we can find her in Abidjan. We won't have to walk, which Sadu can't do, and we won't have to take the bus, which we can't afford. I think over Khadija's idea again. Sadu looks like he's considering it too. I guess, through all of our morning wanderings, Khadija has been thinking of how to move on from here too. A bus had never even occurred to me, probably, probably because we barely had enough money for one meal, let alone bus fare for three. Well, she prompts, I don't see how we're going to get into one of those trucks without being seen. I mean it as a criticism of the whole idea, but only as it leaves my mouth do I realize that, can, that it can also be seen as agreement. The grin that stretches across Khadija's face makes me realize my mistake just a little too late to fix it. <laughs>